Part of the problem was that Christian abolitionists had an issue when advocating for the end of slavery. You see, if they wanted to use the Bible, the Bible never explicitly repudiates slavery. Indeed, many of the godliest people who Christians look up to as an example, they held slaves themselves according to the biblical record. Now, Southern Christians exploited this fact to defend American race-based chattel slavery. Not only did the Bible not condemn slavery, but it actually provided guidelines for the regulation and practice of enslavement. So Southern slaveholders challenged abolitionists to cite chapter and verse where the Bible explicitly condemned slavery as wrong. And therefore, the Civil War actually became a battle of how to interpret the Bible. For example, Southern Methodist preacher J.W. Tucker wrote in 1862, your cause is the cause of God. He's talking to the Confederates. The cause of Christ, of humanity. It's a conflict of truth with error, of Bible with Northern infidelity, of pure Christianity with Northern fanaticism. It made acceptance of race-based chattel slavery a requirement of biblical orthodoxy. In other words, if you want to be a good Christian who believed the Bible, then you had to advocate slavery. This was put forth very eloquently in a theological work by a man named Robert Louis Dabney. He was a Southern Presbyterian minister, and he directly served General Stonewall Jackson. And he wrote a book called A Defense of Virginia and Through Her of the South, which was published just after the Civil War in 1867. In that book, he used passages from the Old and New Testament to explain why supposedly the North got it wrong on slavery and why the South's defense of slavery was justified. He said, was it nothing that this black race, morally inferior, should be brought into close relations with a nobler race, meaning white people? Dabney said that black people tend toward lying, theft, drunkenness, laziness, and waste if left on their own. He then went on to explain the supposed benefits of slavery. It introduced Africans to Christianity. And he says, and above all, was it nothing that enslaved blacks should be brought by the relation of servitude, meaning slavery, under the conscience and Christian zeal of a Christian people, meaning white people. You see, in Dabney's mind, the gentle ministrations of the whip had the salutary effect of commending Christianity to black people. Never mind the fact that Christianity had long been in Africa prior to that, and perhaps there could have been more effective ways to evangelize non-Christian people than through enslavement. Now, had Dabney personally experienced slavery, he might have come to a different conclusion about it as an evangelistic mechanism. As we talk about the Civil War and Christian defenses of slavery and fighting on the side of the Confederacy, it should give every citizen and Christian in the United States pause to consider how strongly ingrained the support for slavery in our country was. People believed in the enslavement of black people so strongly that they were willing to form another country, fight a war, and die to defend it. And throughout it all, Christian leaders and lay people alike looked to the Bible to justify their pro-slavery stance, and they made sophisticated theological arguments for it and believed that God was on their side. 